Hi everyone, in this video I'll be going over a couple problems from 12.5. I'm going to save chapter 13 stuff for another video, even though we were scheduled to do 12.5 and 13.2. Um, I'm going to save 13.2 and just do that with 13.5 and 13.6 in a separate video. Alright, so more exponential growth. Um, trying to find these models based on some information. The difference with this section is that we're given now a percentage rather than being told, oh, something is doubling or tripling or halving as time goes on. We're just told a percent change. This is probably more closely tied to reality because things don't tend to change in these nice periodic ways, doubling or tripling all the time. It's often a little bit more messy. So something growing at 9.8% per day um, might be a little bit more realistic than just the swarm doubling every day. So to read this, it says a swarm, I'm reading example one here, swarm of 120 fruit flies in an experiment grows at a rate of about 9.8% per day. Part one wants us to find a function that models the number of fruit flies in the swarm with respect to the number of days that have passed. Okay, so what I've set up is a table. So I'll show you kind of a, a table way of finding this model, just looking for a pattern again. And then I'll show you a more kind of algebraic way of doing the same exact thing down here. So looking at zero days, and then I'll write some math in here, and then we'll kind of try to come to some function, right? The flies as a function of the number of days. So zero days after finding the swarm, no calculation needed, there are 120 fruit flies. So this is our column for how many are predicted. So after one day, well, we have previously 120, and then we're going to add to this amount after a day. So it says that the swarm is growing at 9.8% per day. So what I'd want to do is say, okay, here's 120 from day zero, and then we're adding 9.8% of 120, the previous day's total. Right, so if you factor out 120, you'd get 120 times one plus 9.8%. Okay, so that's gonna be my total over here. 120 times one plus 9.8%. Okay, so this is now our new total. So if we look at another day passing, we would have this as our starting amount, 120 plus 9.8 percent, right? We have a new starting amount after that first day is concluded. But then I will add to that 9.8 percent of 120 times 1.9.8 percent, right? So let me just show you on a separate piece of paper, maybe some additional work. So now looking at this, again, here's our new starting amount, right? New starting amount. And then we have an additional 9.8% of that new starting amount. So same as what we had up here. Let me try to actually highlight this pattern for you. So we had 120 was our original amount. 120 got updated right here and here. Now we have this starting amount. So that gets updated right here and here. So what I need to do is again factor. So I'm going to factor in this case 120 times 1 plus 9.8% out. So 120 times 1 plus 9.8 percent. I'm factoring that out and that is going to leave behind 
a one, right? Because we factored out its entirety here. So one plus 9.8%, right? So I factored out this entire thing. That's why we have the one, right? Here's that entire thing. Here's that entire thing again. So I took that again out as a factor, just leaving the 9.8% behind in that second position. Once you have 1.98% times itself, I can write 120 times one plus 9.8% squared. So that will be what I put right here, actually. I was just running out of room to do all that math in this in this spot. So I'll write, um, maybe I'll just switch colors to make that a little bit more readable. All right. Um, maybe you can see a pattern. So, there's a one here. So when there was a, a one here for the number of days, it just so happened that there's a one there now. When there is a two here, it just so happened that there's a two there. So if we continue that pattern, the prediction would be that right here we have 120 times 1 plus 9.8 percent cubed and that is what you would see if you carry out that pattern again. So you would update this here and here. So I'll just write that step maybe. So I'd have 120 times 1 plus 9.8 percent squared. That's the new amount. Plus 9.8 percent of 120 times 1 plus 9.8 percent squared. Factor out the squared and you get another copy of 1 plus 9.8 percent and that would make this cube. So if you extend this to some d number of days then it looks like that all that's going to happen is you're going to have exactly this except raised to the D. So I'll write that here maybe. So I would have the number of fruit flies as a function of the days, according to this pattern, would be 120 times 1 plus 9.8% raised to the D. So this is one way of finding it. You can use this pattern recognition method. Let's, let's just look at another um, way. So if you choose to do this a different way, something you can do is look at actual points. So we have that at zero days, there are 120 fruit flies, right? This is D, this is F. And then it's said that after one day, there are 131.76. And that's a theoretical value. You can't really have 0.76 of a fruit fly, but that's what the math would suggest. To get that, what I did was I actually figured out what this number is. Okay, so 120 times one plus 9.8, and then you need to type in percent. On my calculator, it's right here. You get a totally different number if you forget that percent. So I'm typing this, this in here. So shift left parentheses. 131.76, that's how this number was derived. So we have two points we have this general model as f of x equals a times b raised to the x. So we know when the time is zero, we have 120 flies. So you can actually plug into this general model. At zero, we know we get 120. 
And right from this, since b to the 0 is 1, I know 120 is a. Right? And that's what we're seeing actually right here. So that's just a verification of that. After you know a, you can plug a in to this equation. This equation is here because after one day, we have this many fruit flies. So we can write 131.76 equals 120 uh, times b. b to the first is just b. Divide by 120. So I need to figure out what this result is. This is b. So I know a is 120, and this is going to tell me what b is. So I'll just write that a little more clearly. b is 131.76 over 120. So I'm typing that in here now. I get 1.098. So B would be 1.098, and now we would have the model. I'll use D as our input variable and F of D as our output variable. So we would have F of D equals 120 times 1.098 raised to the D. That would be the, the model. So you might be wondering, is that the same as what we got before? And it is. So here's what we just got algebraically. Here's what we got earlier by the uh, pattern recognition technique, if you will. Check out what this number is. So if I type in 1 plus 9.8%, it literally is 1.098. So this number is the same as the number 1.098. So that model and this model are no different. They're exactly the same. That's part one. <laughs> All right, so part two is on the next page. It says, use the model to estimate the number of fruit flies in the swarm after 20 days. So D would equal 20. So F of 20. I have 120 times 1 plus 9.8 percent. I'll just use that first model and then raise to the 20 since we're actually looking at a specific number of days. All right, so it looks like the 779th fly is still in formation, right? So I'll just say that there are about 778 flies. Okay. Let's try one where um, things are decreasing. So let's see what this one says. It says, in 2009, Serbia had a population of about 7.4 million, but that population was estimated to be decreasing by approximately 0.47% per year. So I think they were, they were going through uh, some, a troublesome period in 2009 in Serbia. I think there was some conflicts, civil war practically going on. So people were... Uh, unfortunately, either being killed or, or leaving. So the population of that country was, was actually going down over time. So it says, find a function that models the population of Serbia. Okay. What I'm encouraging you to do is to kind of step back for a moment and think about what we got here. So when the growth rate was going up, by 9.8%, we took 1 plus 9.8%, okay? And that was no coincidence that 9.8 appeared here and it appeared there. The thing about this Serbian problem is that this is not adding to the population, this percentage is subtracting from the population. 
So actually I can write down the uh, formula pretty quickly once you have a, an understanding of how this stuff is working. So the population as a function of, I'll just call it year, would be, this would be your starting amount. It also was no coincidence that we started with 120 and 120 just appeared here. And that's always the case. This number is always the starting amount of whatever is changing exponentially, whether it's money or flies or population, doesn't matter. This is always the starting amount of the quantity you're interested in. Oops. <clears throat> so that's 7.4, and that's in millions. And then I would have times one minus 0.47%. And this would be raised to the year. It's minus because the decrease, right? It's decreasing, so I'm subtracting from one, this percentage. If it was one, then the population would be stable. So for numbers above one, the population's growing. For numbers below one, the population would be decreasing. So this is a number slightly below one. If I just type it in to see what number that actually is, one minus 0.47, and don't forget percent. That's this number just below one. <clears throat> so I could actually write it that way. So P of Y equals 7.4 times 0 0.9953 raised to the Y. And I'll just say where P is defined in millions of people. All right, just to clarify, so I just wrote P is defined as millions of people. So it's not just 7.4 people. All right, I just avoided writing out all those zeros by, by stating this clearly. And Y, I'll just state, is a number of years after uh, 2009. So here's my model. I'll go ahead and box that answer. In part two, it says, use the model to estimate the population of Serbia in 2020. So this year, okay, 2020 is 11 years after 2009. So we would have y equals 11. So p of uh, 11 equals 7.4 times 0 0.9953 raised to the 11. And I'm going to tack on a bunch of zeros or just say in millions in a second. So 7.4 times 0 0.9953 raised to the 11. So I'll say about... I'll just round this, I guess they had round it to 0.4, I'll just round to three decimals, so 7.026 million people. All right. Compound interest, this will be the last part of this video today. So just like fruit flies or uh, people, you know, populations can grow or, or decline exponentially, money can also do this. And that's the hope when you invest money is that your money grows exponentially, right? So um, here's our compound interest formula. Right here, A represents the amount of money in an in the account at some time t. P is the principle um, that you invest. So like if you decide, oh, I have an extra thousand dollars, let me invest it, P would be a thousand in that case. R is the interest rate 
that the bank and you agree on. N is the number of compounding periods in the year. We'll, we'll talk more about N. N is here and here, same N. And then T is the number of years. Okay. So maybe I'll just do both of these, actually. So um, for this first one, it says $3,000 is invested at 4% interest compounded annually. Find the total amount after six years. So P would be that 3,000. R would be that 4%, and we do need the percent symbol. Compounded annually is a way of telling us N. So N, when we have annual, N equals one, because annually just means once in a year. And N is a measure of how many compounding periods are affected in the year. So N would actually just be one in this case. And then we're wondering about T equals six years. So plugging all that information into this formula here. So I'll have A equals 3,000, 1 plus 4 percent over 1 raised to the 1 times 6. And I'll round this to like the nearest penny. Um, let me show you how the calculator stuff works because that's a part of this is getting the calculator to do what you want it to do. So 3,000 times, and then use parentheses, type one plus fraction, I guess, four, and then make sure to use percent. For this calculator, percent is, is behind the left parentheses. So I go shift, left parentheses, scroll down, I'll type a one, scroll right, end your parentheses, and then raise to one times six. So this would be about, 3,795.96, right? That's seven, rounds that five up to a six, so it's about 96 cents at the end. Okay, so let's try example five. Some different parameters there. We have P equals 5,500 this time, right, is invested at 6.25%. Compounded daily. So this is, again, a way of implying what N should be. So in daily cases, there are 365 days in a typical year. So we'll use N as 365. And then we're interested about five years. So the amount, again, I'm plugging into this formula at the top, would be 5,500 times 1 plus 6.25% over 365 raised to the 365 times 5. Okay, so I'll type this into my calculator and then approximate again to uh, the penny. So 5,500 times, parentheses, 1 plus 6.25% over 365, parentheses raised to the 365 times 5. So this is about 7,517. And then 41 cents. That seven is rounding the zero up to a one. So about 41. All right. I'll talk to you all next time.